Wait a moment. This isn't a furry visual novel. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's me, Mount Twitter, The Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Undefeated. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy Phoenix. 18 minutes will entertain you. Let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Okay. Here I am, fully nude, half covered in suds, and he's able to casually stroll in and talk with me. I'm, uh... I gesture to my body. He seems to get the picture. Oh, right, uh, uh, sorry, um... He moves to the other side of the wall. Are you okay? I'm fine. The cold water rinses some soap off my fur. Did I do something wrong in class? I'm fine, Redline. I thought I hurt you or something. I'm... Did I embarrass you? I didn't mean... I'm fine! Redline! I don't really like raising my voice, but he doesn't seem to understand I want to be alone right now. He's quiet for a second. Well, if you say so... There's another pause. I'm gonna go grab lunch. I'll save you a seat, okay? He waits a few more seconds for a response. I'm debating not giving one. Okay. Thanks. Uh, for sure, man. Redline leaves, leaving me alone with my thoughts. In this fucking freezing water... I squirt a bit more soap onto my hand and run it through my hair, scrubbing it over my scalp and around my base of my antlers. Yeah, well, the cold water's good for your muscles. It feels... feels... it feels awful, but it's good for your body. They're already growing in a bit. I don't want to get them trimmed until I absolutely have to. At least Redline's not here to deal with my shitty attitude. I feel like such an ass. I was an ass. Redline didn't mean to embarrass me. He just... It, I just wasn't expecting it. He even tried to apologize, and I shut him down. I should probably apologize. The churning in my stomach at the thought of that makes me think I was a bit... Uh, makes me think it won't be too easy to do. I'll see how he's feeling at lunch. The rest of the suds rinse out of my hair, and after scrubbing down the rest of my body, I turn off the shower. It's a lot warmer in my towel than in the stall. Part of me misses my hair dryer at my old place, as shitty as it was. Whatever. Dried off, fresh clothes, with the old clothes tossed haphazardly under my bed. Red Knight's gym clothes are strewn out, out on his bed, too. I guess he's still at lunch. I should probably make, I should probably make my way down. It's a lot chattier than normal. I guess I've never been here while, the, while it's, it's this full. Redline's at the table he usually sits at, but there's a bunch of other guys seated around him. He flags me down, smiling as big as ever as he motions to an empty seat next to him. Yo, Xander! He nearly has to yell here over the chatter in the room. I drop down into the seat with my tray of food. The rest of the men around are still in their own conversations. Xander, meet my buds! This is Iggy, Jay, and Ollie. He rattles off a bunch of names as he gestures to each of them. Some of them nod back in between bites of food. The others are still wrapped in their conversations. I recognize a few of them from the class earlier, actually. I think we're missing a few. Uh, Rick and Gabe are on vacation, right? Uh, yeah, they saved enough time to hit the surface for a few weeks. Redline nods. Good for them, honestly. They were looking pretty run down, especially after Gabe tore his ACL. The badger that piped up nods. Uh, kind of crowded today, huh? Hmm? Oh, hmm. Yeah, I guess so. Don't, doesn't surprise me, though. I guess we did come at peak lunch hours. My nerves go a little numb, but I take an awkward breath and look at Redline. Hey, listen, Redline. I wanted to apologize. Speakers from the ceiling, I assume, played a bit of feedback as someone taps a microphone. Redline's ears shoot up. Uh, testing, testing. A bit of a cheer erupts from around the cafeteria. Can't seem to pick out the source of the voice, but everyone seems to turn to the center of the space at the top of the mini staircase. Theodore, the nervous rabbit that visited me in the med bay, stands with a microphone in his hands. Um, uh, good, good, good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. The voice of the crowd almost drowns out Theodore of the loudspeakers. I turn to Redline. What's going on? I have to yell over the noise. Redline just beams back. Oh, right, this is your first time, huh? His tail starts sweeping back and forth. It's matchmaking day, dude. As you all know, it's that time of the month. The timid little thing raises a shaky hand, holding an envelope. He tries to open it with one hand. It's kind of awkward, but he manages. I'm sure you're all just as excited as I am to know that what this month's fighter, fights are going to be. You sound excited! Someone yells over the crowd, which had managed to die down a bit in anticipation, but immediately roars back up. The rabbit's ears twitch and his face goes blank as he tries to hurriedly read through the list. <clears throat> uh, this, uh, this Friday, that's in two days, huh? Uh, first up in the lightweight division would be Maddie. As Theodore reads off the name, a cheer erupts from one end of the cafeteria as a lean monkey rises from his seat. And he is up against, uh, Mickey! Mickey's name causes the men around me to cause, to cause an uproar as well. A lynx fellow seated across from me stands, <coughs> stands up as the rest of the table applauds. 
Red Light's friends start pounding the table as Mickey makes his way up to Theodore, where Matthew is already standing. The two stare each other down for a few seconds as the crowd cheers before shaking hands and making their way back to their seats. Mickey's welcome back to the table with a bunch of congratulations and pats on the back while Theodore rattles off another name, followed by more cheering. Red Light finishes by chattering with Mickey, then turns to me. Yeah, so basically once a month, Teddy goes up and lists off all the fights for the next month. That's not a lot of prep time to get ready for a fight, Redline shrugs. Since we basically spend all our time down here training, we shouldn't need much, we shouldn't need much time to do a fight, camp, a fight camp or anything like that. He flexes a bicep, patting it tenderly. These bad boys are ready to go whenever they want to give me someone. Uh, they're just waiting to see if someone as short as you exists. His friend chimes up and Redline laughs, jabbing him in the shoulder. Hey now, Xander's right here. I can feel my face get hot. I'm not that much shorter than him. Theodore's been talking a bit now, but the crowd's the crowd's noise seems to die down after the previous fighters return to their seats. He clears his throat and tugs at his shirt collar. And, uh, uh, the moment you've all been waiting for. We've got a special upcoming championship fight in the heavyweight division at the end of the month. There's a cheer from the crowd with chants of Bruce, Bruce, Bruce pulsing through the men. The reigning champion, uh, Bruce, will be facing off against the, uh, uh the challenger. Uh, Alex. Hearing that name sends a shiver down my spine. Shiver down my skin. The crowd kind of goes quiet, almost confused as they look for whoever has that name. I push myself to my feet. A few heads swivel to look at me. I move through the crowd toward Theodore. What was once cheering and laughing has turned to an uncomfortable whisper as people are surely asking each other too many questions. I climb the stairs where Theodore is standing. It looks like he doesn't want to be here either. Bruce isn't here. He should be easy to pick out of a crowd, but he's nowhere to be seen. As soon as I reach the top step, one voice rings out from across the cafeteria. <laughs> Let's fucking go, Xander! Woo! Everyone turns to the source, and after a second, all of Red Light's friends start clapping as well, a bit, a bit hesitantly. The rest of the crowd dissolves into idle chatter, confused, confused applause or laughter. It takes a lot of control to keep my ears from folding down, but I know that would only make them laugh more. Um, Alex, I, uh... I clear my throat. Theodore, is there any way I could talk with the commissioner? His ears twitch and he looks away. I, I'm afraid that once the match is made, it cannot be undone. You will have to wait until the fight after the fight is over. But I... Theodore bows awkwardly and hops down the steps before I could say another word. A few men harass him as he nearly runs for the exit. He's especially fast for someone so frail looking. Maybe that's why he's so fast in the first place. The cafeteria has gone back to its usual chatter, and I slog my way back to my seat at the table. Redline's got most of them in trance in, the converse, in a conversation, but when I get close enough, he motions me closer. You want to tell these guys what's up? Not really. Redline's ears lower at that, but he turns back to his friends. He's in some weird fucked up contract, and he has to keep fighting Bruce. He hasn't really told me the details. The rest of them echo each other's confusion. A few more are badgering me with questions. I just want to eat my food, but they probably won't stop without an answer. Might as well get it over with. That's really all there is to it, honestly. Uh, the matchmaking system fucked up, and I can't get in touch with the commissioner yet to change it yet. It seems to send a nervous shockwave through the group as they all uh, as they all ease back into their seats. Redline chimes in. Ah, oh, shit, really? That's not great. Not great. Nah. The commissioner, he's... For the first time, they all sort of quiet. Don't fuck with the commissioner, man. One of his friends speaks up, and the rest echo agreement. Yeah, I mean, they don't really know much about him, but there's a reason no one really talks to him. And that is... Redline swallows a bit of food and thinks. I mean, he's like, our boss? Like, we don't really need to question it. It's just our, just do our, I just, we just do our job. This feels like a special case where that might be a risk worth taking. I don't know. Or you can just fight Bruce. Your call. The rest of the group laughs at that, but my heart only sinks into my stomach. I am not really hungry anymore. A few weeks pass by, relatively uneventful, aside from the dread of the next fight looming over me. Uh, Drayden tried getting in touch with me to weasel more information, but I can't really talk to him. He has nothing to do with the fights. He doesn't need to get. He doesn't need to be involved. Theodore has pretty much vanished. Seems no one really sees him outside of matchmaking day. Not that he would have been any help either. He bolted when I tried talking to him about it then, but I don't think that would change now. I roll onto one side. My mattress feels a lot less comfortable these days. The sheets are draped over my top half. I get really uncomfortable when my feet are too hot, which happens pretty frequently in this room. I shut off the air conditioning at night sometimes. I can't really tell why or how often, but I'll sometimes wake up in a pool of sweat. Redline seems to have figured it out, though, with his, with his box fan blowing colder, stale air onto his body. He says the sound of the fan helps him sleep. It's not too intrusive, and it keeps the air moving, so I can't really complain. 
God, his position looks uncomfortable. His limbs are all contorted in wild positions, to each their own, I guess. I click my phone to life. Breakfast doesn't start for another half hour. I sigh. Might as well get out of bed. Waking up early has never been hard for me. Deer are light sleepers by nature, so everyone in my family would always wake up around sunrise. It helped for training, too, since uh, once I started getting serious about it. After I, moved, after I moved out, though, waking up wasn't just natural, it was necessary. The store shelves didn't stock themselves, especially for how early my work opened. Even if it meant unloading hundreds of pounds of shit off a truck at hours at hours unseen by God. <laughs> ah, well, all that is behind me now. Maybe not the early mornings, but that's fine. I like waking up before everyone else. I get to have my alone time, and the silence treats me well. Well, silence, ignoring Redline's fan. I slip a, to a tank top on, and my phone slid down my... And my phone slid down my lounge pants pocket. I step out of the bad bedroom. It's hard to believe I've almost been here for a month already. Uh, one month since that elevator ride. One month since leaving it all behind. A month since... Bruce. And now I get to do it again in a few days. My stomach hurts again. Maybe I should go somewhere to relax before breakfast opens up. It's been a while since I hit the immersion chamber. But maybe the beach will calm me down. The hall is as quiet as ever. I haven't been back here since Redline was showing me around. I pull at the door. Locked. Hmm. Redline must have used a passcode on that panel next to the door. Need a hand? <clears throat> Let's say that again. Need a hand? Bucky's voice echoes from down the hall behind me. I was hoping to get some alone time, but if I had to be interrupted, I'm glad it's him. Yeah, uh, door stuck. Bucky nods, tapping in something on the keypad. Yep, this place is pretty high tech. They don't want random people coming in without a password. Give her a go. Sure enough, the door opens. It's still nighttime in here, but it'll probably be sunrise soon. The ocean is still, and the waves crashing against the shore. The silence is almost eerie. You're up, er You're up early. Yeah, I, uh, couldn't sleep. Hmm, I hear you. Bucky leans on the railing overlooking the ocean. Nervous? About the fight? He stays quiet, like he's waiting for an answer. I move up next to him. How am I not supposed to be? He huffs out a short laugh. I still don't know how you got involved in that contract. It's got something to do with our system or whatever. I need to talk to the commissioner to get it fixed. <laughs> what, you don't think you can take Bruce? I don't really know how to answer that without sounding like an ass. How's that even a question? Not really? Could you? Oh yeah. He didn't even take the time to think about that. Really? Mm-hmm. He'd be lucky to have any pieces left to put himself back together again. He's bigger than you. He's undefeated in his weight class. And? What does that matter? You think I'm going to get anywhere worrying about all that? He turns his head to face me. I don't give a shit that he's huge. That just means he's slower than me. I know how to handle myself. Leave that to instinct and let the rest of my focus go on tearing him to pieces. His finger jabs at his forehead. The absolute worst thing you can do, the absolute worst, is to let them get in your head. The finger moves to point between my eyebrows. You're not gonna let them get in your head. You know exactly who you are, and you know exactly what you're going to do. And nothing can change that. If the last few weeks of training have been an indication, you're probably going to leave and smear it across the cement. Alright? The finger on my head shifts to place his hand flat across my scalp, staring up, staring up into his confident eyes, a genuine warm smile. It's hard to say no to that. He shakes... He shakes my head gently. All right? I chuckle and swipe at his hand. It drops to the railing. All right, all right. You're probably right. Ha! Huh, not probably. I am right. Full confidence, Xander. Whenever you doubt yourself, you gotta make yourself be confident. Even if it ain't real. Fake it till you make it. That sort of thing. And you keep that confidence until it becomes real, you understand? I don't. He continues. If you, don't, if you doubt yourself, you lose focus. You lose focus, you take a hit. It all snowballs until you end up eating the canvas. But if you stay on that track of positive thinking, it's going to do wonders for your mental attitude. You start finding solutions you didn't see before. It won't automatically make you win, as you know, but it'll help you get closer. So I'll ask you now. You're fighting Bruce. Are you going to win? It takes a bit to respond. My stomach is still in knots. Yeah. Took a bit, but we got here. We got there. I'll ask again right before the fight. I got a bit of a chuckle out of me. But what happens if I lose? What did I just say? No, I know, I know, but what if, a mir what if a miracle happens, and he gets lucky and I lose? Then you lose, and you get back up, and you try again next time, and you keep going until you break his dumb snout, big dumb snout in. Or die trying. He goes quiet at that, not like he's mad or confused, but like he doesn't know how to respond. Well, it won't come to that. 
Bruce is a brute, but he's not a killer. We're quiet for a moment. I break the silence. Do you genuinely think you could beat Bruce? Oh, absolutely. Not even with fake confidence. I'll dr I'd drop his ass in a second. My eyes belly pressed firmly against the wall of the railing. Redline did say it had been a while since people have seen him fight. I wouldn't get I wouldn't get out with a few scrapes of I wouldn't get out with a few scrapes, of course, but he's lucky he ain't fighting when I was around. <laughs> I'm surprised you could take a punch from him. I feel like one punch would send me to the ground with a broken jaw. Bucky's eyes peered down at me, almost suspicious of my lack of confidence. That's why I'm not gonna let him hit me, obviously. There we go, and you're not wrong. Bruce is a bit of a powerhouse, eh? Yeah, I'm not normally scared of getting hit from people in my weight class, but that's not really an option for me right now. Really? Not even Red? Hmm? Red, back in our first class, when you went through that initiation. Pup dropped you like a sack of potatoes. Ha <laughs> I haven't really thought about that. I don't think I actually apologized to Redline either. Bucky could probably see my mood drop. Did you want to talk about that? He's a strong little bugger for sure. Probably just weren't expecting it, that's all. He tousles my hair, but his fingers get caught in my antler stubs. I flinch instinctively. Yeesh, these things grow fast, huh? Yes. He doesn't, have to, he doesn't have to tell me twice. You're gonna need a haircut before your fight. And a bone cut? A trim. I've been dreading it for a while, but it has to be done. My fight's in a few days. I'll probably get it before breakfast. Good thinking. We've got grappling today. Can't have you jabbing out the jabbing out the eyes of my boys, huh? We're quiet. We're quiet for a little while. Just listening to the water sway gently. So, what brought you out here? He gives me a, he gives a contented sigh. I usually come out here for a run whenever I can't sleep. Something about the water just helps keep my mind at ease, you know? He pauses. Plus, running on sand gives you a better workout. Working on the treadmill is great and all, but it's good to get a change of scene, right? Keeps you sane. Alright guys and gals, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. If you super thanks, or tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!